seems fair to make the assumption that everything in the world is going wrong. Cities are being put into lockdown. Activists are being jailed for standing up for the rights of underprivileged groups. And, and by protesters, even bystanders, some of whom are children, are being detained and killed for questioning autocratic military regimes. And, as such, quite understandably, most people believe that the world is a terrible place. Yet, for some reason, they don't seem to feel quite the same way about their local areas. This is an example of the fascinating phenomena of individual optimism and social pessimism, which several studies have found to apply to communities almost universally. In one study, for example, the proportion of respondents who rated the environment in their local area, nation, and the whole world as being very or fairly bad was recorded in a number of countries. This revealed that people generally thought of their local area as being better than the rest of their country. And in most countries, people also felt that they were better off than the rest of the world. In particular, it was found that if asked about the environment of a specific country, the likelihood of an individual responding negatively increased exponentially the further away the country in question was. So, why does this matter, you ask? Why are we seeing this? Why are we, or at least why do we seem to be, social pessimists? Well, experts typically land on three main reasons. One, that we rarely take the time to consider issues of a large magnitude, such as those affecting an entire country, or indeed the whole world. And so, when posed questions regarding them, we tend to give answers that are not exactly fully thought out. Two, the nature of the questions themselves asked in the study I discussed, among others, leads to an unintended bias. That is, people think, well, if there weren't a problem, why would they be asking any of these questions? A reasonable judgment to make. And three, and perhaps most importantly, the already limited knowledge that individuals possess regarding the subject matter of these questions is further restricted to that of transitory or temporary occurrences that they have heard about recently and are not representative of the bigger picture. An example of a tendency known as availability bias. Usually, word of these transitory occurrences comes from the media, who have a knack for reporting on extremely unusual, large-scale events or sudden changes. This is not their fault. Sensationalist reporting is simply what grabs our attention and keeps us reading, listening or watching. But what it does mean is that our worldview has become, and still is, shaped not by the steady and pervasive global trends that media outlets seem to omit in their stories, but rather by strange, atypical events that fail to accurately capture reality. And the effect of this is that our preconceptions regarding global development are far more negative than the reality of the situation. Perhaps the most notable example of this systemic pessimism can be seen in the results of a recent study on global poverty conducted by international research firm Ipsos. 52% of the people whom they surveyed in a number of countries believed that global poverty has been on the rise in the last 20 years. A further 28% thought that it has stayed at the same levels meaning that only one in five people were able to correctly identify that the proportion of the global population living in poverty has in fact fallen over the last two decades. And what's interesting is that the share of people who were able to identify this was disproportionately lower in high-income countries. Only 9% in France, Italy and Japan. This is in line with the theory of availability bias, which I discussed earlier, 
because in the last 20 years, it has largely only been the populations of low and middle income countries who've experienced the effects of development firsthand, leaving us and those in the developed world with increasingly outdated views. In fact, if you look at the data, it's shocking the sheer extent of change we've managed to simply gloss over. Because in the last 20 years, global poverty has not just dipped by a measly 1 or 2 percent, but fallen by an incredible 20. In fact, hunger, child labour, teen pregnancies and smoking are all in decline. And this change comes hand in hand with an increase in the average length of time spent in education, literacy rates, access to the internet, and even height. So I guess what I'm trying to say to you is this. Yes, the world is still afflicted with its fair share of problems. But for our faith in humanity, I urge you all to take a big step back. Consider the bigger picture, because only then is it that we will be able to appreciate all it is that we have achieved so far. Thank you. Thank you.